On today's episode of Locked On Lightning, we continue our player reviews. And on today's episode, we're talking about Anthony Duclair, his short stint in Tampa Bay, as well as will we see him next season? All that coming up and more on Locked On Lightning. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Danker. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Locked On Lightning. And a reminder, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. On this episode of Locked On Lightning, we're continuing our player reviews. And on today, we're talking about Anthony Duclair, his short stint in Tampa Bay, as well as taking a look at next season. Will we even see him in Tampa Bay? As well as if we do, what would be our expectations? But before we get into any of those topics, go ahead and follow us on our social media pages at LO underscore lightning on Twitter, as well as locked on underscore lightning on Instagram. You can follow more of my work at over at boltsbythebay.com. And one last thing, I want to wish all of you a happy first Stanley Cup anniversary today in 2004 the tampa bay lightning won their first stanley cup title beating the calgary flames and just a reminder that later in i guess maybe like july we are going to do a whole whole running segment that will probably take up the entirety of the summer where we will going playoff game by playoff game starting from the first series all the way to the last game in the Stanley Cup final of that 2004 championship run where we'll be reviewing every single game. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. So we're talking about Anthony Duclair and and I've wrestled with this a little bit as we started the whole player review thing because I, I wasn't sure whether or not it would have been appropriate to do a review on him considering he only played 17 games in Tampa Bay since being traded at the deadline. But I, I think that the deciding factor into doing that was the fact that he played so well. And I would have to say he's probably up there in franchise history. I would probably say definitely in the top 10, a case could be made maybe top eight. I mean, we that's a whole other segment we could do later on in the summer, but I would have to say he's probably one of the best trade deadline pickups this franchise has had in recent memory, especially. Um, some of you might say Nick Paul and... You would be right to say, absolutely, of, of the Julian Brees boss era, Nick Paul is probably up there, if not number one, as the the best pickup at the trade deadline. Brandon Hagel, I think, was a little earlier. Um, but we would have to put Duke in the conversation, even though he didn't play a lot of games and his future in Tampa Bay is very murky. I would still have to put him there just because we talked about it so much during the season and and the effect that he had on this team in the very short stint that he had during the regular season was just how well this team played around him. We talked about it when the trade broke that this was going to be a great pickup for Tampa Bay. This was a guy who had an unusual combination of experience and age on his side. Um and, and when you look at the experience factor, especially, you look at this guy has, has played 10 years for a bunch of franchises, uh, pl- had, a, had a cup of coffee in New York when he, was, when he was drafted by the Rangers, played, I think, not even a handful of games out there, uh, actually played 18 games out there, and then kind of just jumped around the NHL. He made his way to Arizona. I believe that was along in the Keith Yandel trade a while back. Uh, he had a stint in Chicago. He was in Columbus, Ottawa, Florida last season, San Jose earlier this year, of course, and of course in Tampa Bay. And 
it's crazy to think about when you look at his stats on the season. He had in the 17 games he played with Tampa Bay, he 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 had eight goals, he had 15 points. Uh, that total comes out to 24 goals on the season, 42 points uh, total between his time spent in San Jose and in Tampa Bay. And the fact that he was able to come into this lineup, and I think within the span of a week, he went from playing on the second line to being a first-line forward with, with, with Point and Kucherov, it really showed how easily he was able to assimilate to the lightning offense and to this team um to be able to to do that is obviously no easy thing i mean we talk about it all the time when we've been talking about Tanner Janot, we talked about it with the Brandon Hagel uh acquisition a couple of years ago and and on his player review uh podcast as well but for a guy to come in and do that, and and really since day one, really uh, to be able to do that, I mean that just shows how good of a player this guy is. And looking back on the season, you know it's kind of disappointing, disappointing that when it came playoff time, we really just didn't see much of anything from him. Um, it, it was just just you, you kind of figured as he was going into the playoffs, you know, kind of playing basically at this high level since day one in a Tampa Bay Lightning uniform, you kind of would have figured that he would have been able to, you know, pick things back up once the playoffs started. He's facing his former team that he was on last year, went to the Stanley Cup final with them, kind of would have figured with that history as well as with the kind of groove he was been on over those last 17 games, you kind of would have figured that he would have been able to just almost kind of pick this team up and put him on his back because we all knew going into that series that the main thing for Florida was to keep Kucherov quiet, which they a hundred percent did. I mean, that was a whole disappointing thing, which we'll obviously get into on the Nikita Kucherov review, but it, I'm not, and, and, and don't, don't get it twisted. I'm not pinning the whole playoff run or, or the whole shortened, playoff run or any of it on Duclair. I mean, this team, you know, as, as do as cliche as it sounds, this team wins as a team and they lose as a team and they lost very badly as a team in that series. And, and, you know, we talked about it at the time it, it, it wasn't on any single player. It was more so that, you know, the Panthers are just such a better team and they, they are, as we have seen with this lightning team in the past, when they were the top dogs in the NHL and what we see with every good team in the NHL is that good teams find ways to exploit the faults in the teams that they're playing. And Florida was able to just pick apart everything that Tampa was trying to do or was not trying to do in that series. And so, but when, when I look at Duclair, it, it, it's one of those things that, especially if he doesn't come back to Tampa Bay, it's going to be really disappointing because you're going to take a look back on this very short stint of games that he had and, and kind of wonder for, especially if things don't go well for the lightning next season, you're going to have to wonder whether, you know, what might've been if the Duke were able to stay in Tampa Bay. So, let me know in the comments section below uh, what were your thoughts on his season. If I have to put a grade on his season, at least with the Lightning, I can't speak for how he played in San Jose. But if I have put a grade on his tenure thus far in Tampa Bay, I'm going to give him an A, a solid A. I mean, A plus probably if he comes out in the first round of the playoffs and basically carries the Lightning through that entire series, win or lose. Um, but really you you look at what you hoped out of out of that trade uh coming from San Jose and where the lightning were at that point in the season uh you really couldn't have asked for anything more um you, you know some i some might venture to say and and i would be one of those people that could make the case almost to a certain extent that maybe the duclair trade at least within the time frame that he had in was better than the trade that the lightning had for Nick Paul just because of the effect that Duclair had where Paul yes he 
he scored and played well, but Duclair has a totally different kind of side of game to him than Paul does. And and I think we could agree that um, we would all love to see Anthony Duclair back in Tampa Bay next season. So actually coming up on the next segment, we'll be talking about does he come back in Tampa Bay? Uh, what is it going to take for him to come back to Tampa Bay? We'll talk about everything surrounding that as well. But first, we're going to talk about our first sponsor on today's show, and that is our friends over at Poly Policy Genius. Now, a lot of life is unpredictable, but a good life insurance plan gives your family a financial safety net to protect against some of the unknowns. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It makes choosing the right policy for your family easy and quick with policy genius you can find life insurance policies that start at just 292 dollars per year for one million dollars of coverage some options are 100 percent online and let you avoid unnecessary medical exams now my my sisters are getting a little older they got you know they have young children they got to think about all the unknowns in life you know what's going to happen if something were to happen to them they went on to policy genius they found a plan right away and you can too so get the peace of mind by finding the right life insurance with policy genius head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save that's policygenius.com so as always, I'm going to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are streaming in audio form. We're also available on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel there and hit the notification button wherever platform you may listen or watch us on. Just so as the newest episode drops, you will be notified. So obviously the big story now after that big season or, or big couple of months whatever you want to call it with anthony duclair now the question is now especially that he is a, a unrestricted free agent what is next in store for this guy what, what what can we expect or what could we expect the lightning to do now a lot has happened obviously since the the conclusion of the season um we thought we were kind of in the clear with cap space for the most part there, there was obviously going to be some questions, but then the lightning go ahead, shock the world, go ahead and get Ryan McDonough. Obviously, that was a piece that was needed. Some people may not actually like that trade. I personally did appreciate it. I liked it very much. I thought that it was the right move to make, especially with that familiarity that both parties have. You know what you're going to get out of McDonough as well as McDonough knows what's waiting for him in Tampa Bay and some of the players that are there. Now, here in here lies the issue with both sides with Anthony Duclair and the Tampa Bay lightning. So rewinding just a little bit. And, and I actually didn't watch the whole thing. I've watched snippets of the exit interview that Anthony Duclair gave, uh, after the season ended, when the lightning lost in that in the first round playoff series to Florida, he was talking about, Tampa Bay in the past tense, which could mean one or two things. It could mean that he was genuinely not sure of whether or not he was going to come back, or he already made it up in his mind that Tampa Bay is not going to be in the cards when he's looking for, I guess, a permanent home uh, this offseason. And with Duclair coming to town, I mean, not Duclair, I'm sorry, Ryan McDonough coming to town. So if you want to follow along on capfriendly.com, the projected cap space for next season, not even discussing Steven Stamkos right now, is $5 million and change. Now, you, you look at what Duclair has made in past seasons. So his most recent contract that he got for three years just expired this offseason like i said from the panthers he made three million a year aav now i would imagine not only is he going to want something a little bit higher than that given how valuable he is now not only to the tampa bay but to other prospective teams that are looking for a guy who could slide in and be a sec a, a top six forward who let's face it not a there's not a lot of guys out there that could do that there's not a lot of players, and it's it's very, very rare that 
you are able to go out in free agency and get a guy with the experience that Duclair has, with the polished off game that he has, to be able to get a guy to come in and just be a top, top six forward and be such an easy player to play with. Um, I think he has the kind of game that really, you could put him on any team in the league, on any line in the league, and he'll be able to figure out a way to be successful and score points and score goals and help his teammates out. I truly believe that. And he's such a dynamic player where he could play. Phys he gives you the physical game too. And so what that means for him is that his his value's up. His value's going to go up. So if I had to put a number on him yearly that he is probably going to want, I'd probably say four, maybe even four and a half if you're getting greedy. And I would imagine at this point in his career, he's going to want a team or a deal that is going to give him years where we're gonna, he's not going to have to worry every three years or or whatever the case may be on signing a new deal. He's not even 30 yet, which is crazy to even think about. He turns 29 in August, so that tells you where he's at in his, his career and you know, the book is still open on him developing other parts of his game or at least working on them to where he gets better and becomes more of a dynamic player, if that's even possible. And that makes things very difficult. I mean, if things weren't difficult enough for the Lightning getting Ryan McDonough's contract, which, yes, it, it, it provides a great burden on this team, but in the end, I think is going to help out in terms of defense, then so be it. But it it, dev it provides an, a big obstacle for the Lightning to try and make themselves better because that, that $6.7.5 million that you could have used to do something else with now it, it it it's a little tough, especially if you're really trying, which you know the Lightning are trying to do. Of course, you're trying to get back Steven Stamkos. You're trying, if you can, if unless Duclair's reps have already told you that he's not coming back, he doesn't want to be there. Now you're you're also trying to get Duclair back because yes, that line of Duclair, Point, and Kucherov looks phenomenal, but. Like I alluded to before, the the exit interview didn't give me anything, and I'm sure a lot of Lightning fans feel this way as well, it didn't provide me with anything that gave me even a slight inkling that he wanted to be back in Tampa Bay. Which, listen, if, if, if it don't fit, if a guy doesn't want to be here, I'm not going to be petty about it. Thank you for your service, and we'll go our separate ways. Now... Having said that, we haven't heard anything definitive that proves that that is actually the case. So I will keep an open mind of it. And maybe it's also wishful thinking because especially if Stamkos does not come back to Tampa Bay, then that makes the signing of Duclair even that more imperative. And that's why I get the talk. I mean, I, I don't understand it because it's, it's very biased I believe but I that's why I sort of get the talk about people wanting to trade away Tanner Janot as much as yes trading away him trying to figure out a way to get rid of Connor Sherry which honestly is not going to happen you get rid of that 4.6 and, and change combined now that that Stamkos and Duclair signings look a lot better and I would imagine if, I, I mean, I can't even imagine, I could only speculate, but if I was Anthony Duclair's agent, I'm saying, let's get you a deal. I would say five, six years, no trade clause for three. Let's do four, four and a half AAV, which if the Lightning find a way, and that might be the whole reason as to why there's been nothing about a Stamkos or a Duclair signing. I would imagine that's probably the reason why we haven't heard anything is because 
the Lightning are exercising their options right now. They're probably looking, and, and especially we talked about it on yesterday's episode, all the rumors swirling around Tanner Janot. I wrote an article about it on Bolts by the Bay earlier today, how, you know, really in actuality, the Lightning shouldn't trade Tanner Janot. But in the end, if if you do trade Janot, if you can find a deal for Sherry, especially, it better be for the sole reason of getting Stamkos and Duclair back. Especially Duclair, because, yeah, Stamkos is, is a player that you definitely need. He's the heart and soul of this franchise. But let's face it, maybe you have two, three more years of him where he could still be a 40-goal scorer, maybe even less, depending on if he could stay healthy. Where Duclair, you could still get that 20, 25 goal season for the next four or five years. And he's one of those players, not in the same level, but along the same lines of how they play to a certain degree. He's like Nikita Kucherov. He makes everybody around him better. And he opens up the ice for his teammates to be able to score and to get open in scoring positions. So let me know in the comments below how you feel about that. I mean, it, it, it's a very complicated situation. You know, all we could do is speculate. Like I said, there has been zero talk about whether or not the Lightning have even any intention of bringing back to Claire. Um, there hasn't really been any discussion as well about what's going on with the Stamco situation. If I had to speculate, if I had to put a, a declaration of what might be happening... It's because they're trying to figure out what to do with with Jano, with Sherry, possibly Chernak. I would imagine that's part of the plan. You bring up McDonough, bring on McDonough, you're obviously shipping someone out of your defensive pairings and making room for someone in Syracuse to come up and help out. So like I said, let me know if you want to reach out to me or to the show. Go ahead at LO underscore lightning on Twitter as well as locked on underscore lightning on Instagram. Reach out to me at Danky Dank, D-E-N-K-Y, D-8-N-K. You can reach me out on there or just comment below this video on YouTube. So coming up in just a little bit, if Duclair comes back, what are our expectations? We wrap it up as we always do with our player reviews with expectations for 2024-25. But first, we're going to wrap things up with our last sponsor on today's show. And that is our friends over at Game Time. Now, Game Time makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on Game Time app actually go down closer as it gets close to the beginning of your event with last minute killer deals, all in prices. Views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I love their last minute deal feature. You could save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, whatever event you're trying to get into. Game time can help you out. I also love the seat views. You could get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Gone their days of sitting behind a book behind a pole and gone are the days of obstructed view so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use the code locked on nhl for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem the code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-h-l for 20 dollars off your first purchase download game time today last minute tickets lowest prices guaranteed so one last time i want to let you know and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to our podcast and help us out. I mean, it all, all it does is help us grow and reach more Lightning fans that may not know that we even exist. Or even spread the word. Just let some someone know uh, that this is your number one stop for all Lightning news, rumors, and just, you know, especially during the season when the Lightning aren't playing well, uh, the Lightning's, the Lightning's feeling hour that uh, if our day one listeners... Um, would definitely know about. <laughs> so check that out, uh, especially when the season starts. So if Duclair were to come back next season, what are the expectations from him? Obviously, the, the number one expectation, well, the first expectation would to be really, you know, that he comes back on a deal where it's not going to handcuff the Lightning financially. It's not going to only not ruin things for a Stamkos reunion, but also be able to f help the Lightning figure out a deal that they could also bring back Victor Hedman after next season. And 
that's a whole nother episode within itself. If, if we want to get into that, which we probably will at some point in the next couple of weeks, but the expectation in terms of performance. Now you look at his stats now follow along on hockey reference. If you wish you look at his stats and Duclair has only scored 30 goals once in his career. You know, you have, especially in the seasons where he plays long enough, 20, 25, really this season was the second highest total that he has reached in his career for goals. Uh, Same goes for points. And I will say, though, that really the big thing there and i think this is the reason why he has bounced around so much is because of his inability to stay healthy consistently you know you you start from the time he was 19 in new york played 18 games yes that was a whole nother thing it wasn't that he was hurt it was just they didn't have a spot for him plays 81 his first season in arizona plays 58 there uh the next season Played 74, split between Chicago and Columbus. Played 66 in Ottawa. 74 in Florida in 21-22. 73 total in 23-24 this season. And that's really what it's been. It's been injuries. And that's why I get it. Why the movement's been so rampant. But I think that he's at a point of his career where I think that as many NHL players do are able to kind of pinpoint the things that they need to work on health wise, the things that they need to do to get themselves ready for the season, as well as during the season to, to stay healthy and on the ice. And I think that's why this is the best time to, to bring him back. And I expect him, if he were to come to Tampa Bay to play on the first line with Kucherov and point, to score 25 plus goals. I think on a Kucherov point line, you might even get up to 30 goals. And with points, you might even get higher. You might even get 50 playing alongside two of the best scorers on this team. I would expect him to get some second power play time as well. I would expect him to to really be one of the top go-to guys on this team. As he was during the regular season in his, like I said, 17 short games with the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I think that almost it would be really foolish not to bring him back because of all of that. I wouldn't be surprised if Stamkos doesn't come back and Hedman gets to see that maybe at some point later on this season, if not next season, because if he does come back, I would assume it's on a a long-term deal that we will see an A on his sweater because he does, in my opinion, hold that much weight within a short amount of time on this Lightning team. And I I really think that it would really speak volumes about the front office because, you know, this has also been a topic of conversation that for every very good deal that Julian Brees boss makes, he makes a couple that are complete blunders. And I could agree with that for, to a certain extent, but I also feel the deals not made are probably sometimes the worst ones. One that comes to mind a couple of years ago was not making any type of effort to move Alex Kalorn. And I know he had a no trade trade clause, but, you could figure out ways around that. You could figure out ways to try and move him, especially when he puts out his his team list. Another another one that comes to mind is Jan Ruda. The guy walked away and he got nothing for him. And so not making the deal, especially if you don't get Stamkos back this offseason, and not being able to bring back Duclair would probably be worse than making a deal for somebody else. So let me know in the comments below how you feel about all that. And we'll be back on Monday to continue our player review segment. So once again, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast and hit that notification button on any platform. So as soon as the newest episode drops, you'll be notified. So in the meantime, that's been it for this episode of Locked on Lightning, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. 
I'll talk to you in the next one.